Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. Something that I've been wanting to talk about here is uh, a lot of the appearances that Eric July is doing on places like The Blaze, The Daily Wire, Fox News, and a lot of the uh, more conservative outlets that are branding what he's doing as non-woke or even anti-woke. Now, what brought this to light was the Eric July uh, uh, just shared on his YouTube page that he did an interview with Michael Nose from The Daily Wire. And what really got to me was the way that the title of the video was done. Now, I watched the interview because I didn't want to come into this half-cocked. And I I, I, I watch a, uh, well, a fair amount of the Daily Wire stuff. Not all of it, but a fair amount. And it was just, it, it, the, the title was just, you know, the, oh, this non-woke... Uh, this non-woke uh, comic book hero makes like $3.5 million. And I wonder if this whole idea of non-woke is helping or hurting Eric July. And I want to come at this from a few different angles. Because for me... Well, let's introduce today's beer. Today's beer is just bush light. I, I, I can't afford fancy beers all the time. I don't know. Maybe if the channel grows to magnanimous heights one of these days maybe i'll be able to have a fancy beer for all of you guys and i can recommend something you know good every night but anyway we're drinking bush light so i watched the interview and the interview was actually conducted very very well and i like that eric uh, really doesn't address in his interviews the anti-woke non-woke um uh descriptors for his comic book i won't say rhetoric um and Michael Knowles uh, saw that, and after Eric's um, description of what he was doing, why he wanted to do it, where he wanted to go with this comic book, and what he saw as a problem in the comic books, Michael Knowles readily accepted that. He's a great. He's. A, I I personally think that Michael Knowles is a better interviewer than he is a solo presenter. That's just my personal thoughts on the matter. I obviously never met the guy, probably never will, but I just, that's my personal thing. I think he's a great interviewer, uh, uh, less good solo. So, but I've seen several things at this point in the more conservative outlets where they bring Eric July on because this is a huge success. And the fact of the matter is, is they're the only media that's going to cover what he's doing. And that is fantastic. Now, my issue with a lot of this is wondering whether or not the non-woke or anti-woke, and I hate that term. You guys know, if you're subscribers of the channel and you've been here, you know that I like to call it the fourth great religion. I think woke is a bastardized uh, version of the English language. I think that it is the word itself is made intentionally to be uh, definitionally, definitionally indescriptive so that way they can change the language i think that definitions are highly important to the way that we speak and to communicate so if you're ever talking with somebody about like what woke is you need to define that word and they need to agree with you if you're going to go into some sort of internet debate on what woke is and then that way if they start to trail off you can go no we both agreed this was the definition that we're going to be using i prefer to use Standard definitions that you can find in dictionaries, you can search on the Google's, you know, uh, woke definition. You can use that one. You can go to the Oxford Dictionary. If it's in there, I don't know if it is. You can go to Merriam-Webster. I don't care. But definitions are highly important. So I don't like the term woke. I needed to put that caveat out there. I needed to let you guys know what, how I feel about the term in general. I also feel somewhat similar about the term based, but we won't get into that. That's for a different video. What I'm wondering is, Eric is marketing this as just a story that he wanted to write uh, with good characters, uh, strong motivations, and obviously a strong storyline behind it. A lot of the conservative media is saying anti-woke. Now, there are two trains of thought here. Is One, I think Eric does not necessarily want to make an anti-woke comic book. In fact, I don't think he wants to make a non-woke comic book. I think he, he wants to make a non-real-world political uh, comic book. So he doesn't want to tie in real-world politics into his story, into his characters, and bring that reality into the books. It's something that I've talked about in my Tolkien videos. Tolkien very much understood that escaping from a reality is hugely important for people to understand themselves better and what reality can offer them by having the option to escape into fantasy uh, in, in various different forms. Um, 
and and and, and get away from themselves long enough to kind of understand themselves. Now, I don't think that Eric thinks of it in these terms. I think that Eric thinks of it in the terms of, well, I liked this, they're doing this, therefore I don't want to do this, I want to go back to this. Now, what I think hurts Eric in the world of Twitter, and he does a very good job of handling it because he does not market his stuff as this, but there are clickbait titles out of there, and I've watched several interviews at this point where the only one was really Fox News that kind of drilled down on this. Um, and that's why I don't like Fox News. I can't stand those guys. I, When I was younger, maybe. No, no. But the reason that I really don't like this non-woke or anti-woke stuff is because it's a very clickbaity title and it's disingenuous to what Eric is doing. Now, it may get eyes on his comic book from a lot of people who are subscribed to The Daily Wire, who's, who've subscribed to The Blaze, who've subscribed to Fox News or watch Fox News. And I think that that is very good, right? Obviously, it's a lot of exposure from a media source that uh, will give him media attention, whereas we know a lot of other media sources, even the places that cover comic books, won't give Eric that attention. So, if we are going to be using these clickbaity titles like this, the anti-woke, the non-woke, things like that, does that hurt Eric in the overall population by using this? Is it possible that things like this, people check out Eric and they go, oh, cool, he's doing this comic book. I didn't know about this. And then they see these things pop up in their timelines. They go, wait, non-woke, oh, is this some political crap again? And then they just kind of go, well, I was thinking about it, but then they said that you were doing this non-woke, so obviously there's this political infused bias in here. I don't really know if I want to do that. Now, for me personally, <clears throat> because I go to the source and not these other media outlets that are using clickbaity titles, it didn't affect me at all because I listened to what Eric said and I take Eric at his word. Like, I take a lot of people at their word, right? The other side of this is a lot of people may say, look, I think it's a good thing that people are doing these clickbaity, anti-woke, non-woke headlines because that leads a lot of people to Eric that would otherwise not have known about him. It's kind of that whole, you know, any marketing is good marketing type of mentality. Any exposure is good exposure, blah, 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 blah. And that's obviously something that's classic in, you know, well, basically since about the 19, what was it, 1940s or 1950s when they figured out psychological marketing manipulation uh if you guys know when we started psychological marketing manipulation I, I believe it was in the 50s and it was uh largely based off of like propaganda techniques that we got from world war ii anyway that's a oh, sorry sorry for that non sequitur but my problem with these conservative outlets coming out and saying non-woke or anti-woke because it's disingenuous to Eric July. He is doing a non-political comic book simply with the values of a hero fighting against some version of a bad guy. And that's what it sounds like. That's what Eric has said himself. That's what his website alludes to. And it is one of those things that I wonder if a lot of people are going to miss by seeing these clickbait titles. Obviously, this loads the opposite side of the aisle with some, oh, well, you're calling it non-woke. You're calling it anti-woke. And he goes, no, I didn't call it that. They did. They go, oh, well, I just saw it. And he's like, yeah, but you, you obviously didn't go to my website and do it, right? And so what this does is it gives political ammunition, which this should not have any sort of political ammunition, right, left, or center, or extreme right, or blah, 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 whatever. It shouldn't have any political ammunition to the fact of having just a story of a superhero doing his thing. And I feel like these companies are doing more damage to uh, Eric's brand than they are doing good for guys like me. Now, I can only use me as the example. Maybe I'm wrong, and there's probably a very good chance that I am wrong. But I do wonder if this whole, if people are just getting tired of hearing the woke versus the based versus the Republicans versus the Democrats. And if that is something that would turn potential customers, if simply these companies changed their titles on their videos, because again, I've watched some of the interviews and it seems that a lot of these interviews are actually very good. They mentioned the non-woke, anti-woke thing once or twice. Eric just goes, he goes, well, it's not really about that. It's this. And he explains very well. And Eric, uh, I love that Eric is well rehearsed, but he's not obviously reading off of anything. So his answer is always different. And that's a, that's a fantastic thing for anybody being interviewed about their product is that their answer is the exact same all the time. You go, oh, this is scripted. Eric is obviously not scripted. My concern, again, goes back to the titling of the videos. Is that titling potentially damaging 
to the brand of Eric July. Somebody sees, oh, Isom's coming out, click, this is really cool. They scroll down and in their recommendations, it's look at this, anti-woke, non-woke comic book. And it's like, wait, this is the guy that I just watched and he didn't say it was that. Is Eric lying to me? That's, that's kind of how I feel that a lot of this could be portrayed to a lot of people who could be potential customers. I also think that it could be a positive, but I think it's gonna be more of a negative because there are largely more people in the uh, United States and I believe in the world that are non-political. That is an objective fact. More people exist in the world who are non-political than do that are political. That's why what we're seeing right now with everybody becoming political is such a culture shock to all of us. And I think that in my personal opinion, it would be a fantastic thing if Eric would just look at people and say, hey, just just do me a solid. Just don't call it non-woke. Don't call it anti-woke. Call it non-political. Call it anti, you know, or, or you know, call it non-political. Call it whatever you want. Just don't call it non-woke, right? Let's not make it seem like I am out here just trying to dunk on these guys in a comic book the way that I dunk on them on Twitter. I think Eric is very non-woke on Twitter. I think he's anti-woke on Twitter. That's great. I don't want to read Isom if that's what it is. And these are some of the thoughts that I've had. I'm wondering, is this a bonus or is this a negative? For me personally, every time I see something like this, I just kind of sigh a little bit because I'm like, that's not what Eric is doing. And I had to watch the, the Michael Knowles interview, which actually is a very good interview. You can look, it's the thumbnail of the video. Uh, I, I, it was a very good interview. I thought it I, I was actually it. I actually had less expectations for that video going into it. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, wow, Michael gets it. Michael Knowles actually understands. Obviously, he's a very intelligent man and, and is more well read and more knowledgeable about more historical facts and more political facts than I am. But that is 100 percent true. But the titling specifically how these other people are marketing kind of for Eric. And they're not, I won't say marketing because he's not paying these people, but it's, it's those titles that really bother me. And my question is, does this hurt Eric July? Does this hurt the Ripperverse? I hope it does not. But if for some reason, this is something that does hurt him in the long run, because again, people, well, you're just running a non, and Eric's like, well, I didn't say that. And they're like, well, I saw you on it. He's like, yeah, but I never said that. They're not going to go check it out. Their people aren't going to go check it out. And honestly, I think it would be more important for the woke people to check out his comic book that's non-political. And maybe they're not, like, indoctrinated into the woke. Maybe they're just like, well, yeah, I, I, you know, we shouldn't be, like, mean to people. Because that seems to be, that's how a lot of the woke people catch people. Well, we shouldn't be mean. Does this turn more people away? I know I've said that many times. It's just, I can't, I keep looping back to that. I mean, at this point, I should have just been a record skipping with how many times I've said this in this video. But it does speak to me. It does say something to me, and it makes me sigh every time I see it. The Fox News interview I didn't like. Gabe El Taib pushed back on that, which was very good. Um, uh, Glenn Beck had a very different kind of a take on it. But like I said, all of this anti-woke, non-woke stuff, does it hurt Eric July? Does it help Eric July? Is it neutral? Think about this objectively. Don't just take yourself as an analogous. I did for the purposes of this video, and I'm trying to remove myself from that. And if you are, which fuck all of you are, like all of you in the comments think of things in ways that I don't and ways that I can't grasp and angles that I can't grasp. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this anti-woke, non-woke stuff that the Daily Wire and all these other conservative outlets are kind of branding their videos as when they talk to Eric July. And let me know what you guys think about this video as well. Don't also just do a favor for me. Hit the like button. Supposedly the like button. If you guys just click the like button, it tells YouTube, hey, tell other people about this. If you guys really like what I'm doing, hit subscribe. If you guys think I am doing better than what you expected, share the video with everyone that you know in all of the places that you know. If you're checking out a stream or something and you go, hey, yeah, I... I 
check out a drink with crazy in their live chats that's how you can share it that's what a lot of people are doing obviously you can't share my links in a lot of live chats but maybe you can toss out my name in there because i'm realizing more and more facebook and twitter a lot of people can't share there anymore because most of my viewers are banned from twitter and facebook because reasons but maybe you shout a drink with crazy out in a live chat somewhere maybe maybe just maybe you guys like what i am doing enough and you like the conversation enough that you want to go down in the description below and join my gilded that would be amazing to see more of you join the gilded join that community over there we talk about family and food and share pictures of our animals and two a friendly over there and all that stuff so let me know what you guys think and thank you so much for being here on a drink with crazy and i look forward to seeing you all next time cheers everybody Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.